Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again. I know you can't see me because of my camouflage hat, right? But we're back again uh, with a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Nice, beautiful cabin in this crazy, you know, snow covered wilderness. Got a big fence. It's just, I, I just love everything about this painting. It's super textured. You'll be able to feel it when you get done, and it's just, it's, it's fantastic. And obviously, you think so because you clicked on that link and you want to learn how to paint it. So check the description down below. You can uh, find all the colors that we use, all the brushes that we use, and if you don't have any of that, you can below that you can find my uh, Amazon storefront link which you can go purchase anything right through Amazon and they'll get it right to your house and uh, you'll be able to paint along with us you can come back in a couple days right so uh, but for those of you ready to paint right now let's get to it we're gonna hop to it just like this oh good morning everyone oh shoot not to have a mishap already today I was putting the liquid white on our canvas to get started today and I hadn't tightened this down enough, so it slipped a little. And you guys know what can happen when that happens. There we go. Let's see, just making sure we got all of our Bob Ross liquid white on. We're actually on time today, can you guys believe it? We are on time and ready, present for class. And on time. You guys may not be able to see me because of my camouflage hat. I get it. It just made it look like a headless person painting. And that's fine. I did it on purpose. I want to be incognito. Let's see. Who else's arm gets tired after just putting liquid white, even on a small canvas? In that case, in case we do any water, stuff like that. You guys have seen the description. It's going to be a winter landscape. Bob Ross style winter, and I really want to do like a nice up close big like cabin. We're gonna get some good details in the in the wood paneling and all that, nice and nice and close up. So if you've been struggling painting cabins, this is the painting for you. We're gonna use all Bob Ross colors today. Uh, dark sienna. I can't figure out where the paint is on this, but it keeps getting on my hand. Dark Sienna, Thalo Green, Sap Green, Thalo Blue, Lizard Crimson, uh, Midnight Black, Titanium White, Bright Red, Orange, uh, sorry, Indian Yellow, uh, Yellow Ochre, and Cad Yellow. Almost every single color except for the, the Van Dyke Brown. Okay, I can't decide if I want to do like a, like a sunset snow scene, right, where you get these beautiful colors in the snow, or, you know, just a blue sky or a stormy sky. What do you guys think? Well, the last, just the last little bit while we're setting up, I love taking suggestions from you guys and trying to cram them into a painting. So think like me, okay? Think like me, we're gonna do, you know, mountain, cabin, maybe a fence, right? So throw some colors at me, sunset, sky, blue sky, type them in the comments box and uh, my wife will see it and relay your information to me. You guys don't know we have a we use Jasco brush cleaner to clean our brushes. It's a little bit stinkier, but you know it works a little bit better. You have to use less in order to get the same results as like low odor mineral spirits. So besides that, 16 by 20 inch canvas, you can find everything that we have from the easel to the canvases to the brushes. Everything that we use to paint, you can find on Amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art. Okay? And since you guys haven't responded. I'll just go ahead and we're going to start making a sunset because I love painting sunsets. That's what Lee Callaghan says. Well, there you go. Lee, me and you are on the same page. I beat the sunset. We are going to do a sunset. We're going to get a few of the, a little bit of the red, a little bit of the Indian yellow, a little bit of yellow ochre right on our brush here. Hope it doesn't mix with any of the other colors that we have from our painting on Friday. If you guys don't know, we painted on, uh, we painted live on Friday. Uh, in the Bob Ross Oil Painting for Beginners group. So if you're not in the Bob Ross Oil Painting for Beginners group, you should go request to join. Especially if you enjoy painting, you know, in these in this wet on wet style. It's a really neat group. A lot of supportive people. There's kind of veterans in there. There's the beginners in there, and everybody just gets along, and it's fantastic. So I decided to go live in there because I didn't want to overdo it and go live in both, you know. Friday and then Sunday, you guys would get sick of me if I went live too many times. Too many times in a week. I want to throw some red in here. 
we're just sort of figuring this out as we go. All right, just throw some colors in, not even really blending them together yet, but I want them to be matching on the top and the bottom, okay? I'm gonna finish our edges real quick, just because it only takes a few seconds and it makes it look more complete. Okay, we're gonna throw all sorts of stuff in there too, but let's get some crimson. Throw some crimson up in here and just block it in. Like I said, just dropping it in with our one inch brush in different places. All right, and then we can come in and blend it all out. Maybe there's some down in there. All right, it doesn't all have to be yellow. We're gonna blend everything away. Okay, I'm gonna take a bit of our phthalo blue, a little bit of our black, come up into our sky and we'll test it. Oh, it's very dark up here. All right, we're gonna have to throw like a little cloud in front there. There we go. Just all over the place, right? You wanna leave some spaces in between, that way stuff can blend together and everything will be all nice and pretty. We're gonna wash our brush. Definitely gonna wash this brush. Gonna use it later. And take our two inch brush now and just start in our lighter areas and just kind of crisscrossing back and forth just like this. You get used to this after a while. Just crisscross. I like to kind of grab it down or where the where the little brass piece is that wraps around. That way you're not, you know, really pinching the handle or holding it, your hand gets more tired more quickly. Quicker. I'm gonna try to keep some of that yellow in there. I'm gonna blend a lot of it into this pinkish color. I'm gonna come down a little bit there, a little bit there. Just sort of keep it, you know, you get these little light areas, little dark areas. I'm gonna bring our dark down and just sort of dragging it, you know. Dragging it down, dragging it down. This one's very thick and dark up here, so I don't want to grab too much of it as we pull down. Maybe we'll wipe the brush off a little bit. And right, that way we won't drag too much of this thick color where it went on real thick, right? There. Cover our sides up. And then after we finish, Josh goes back and gets that little top section right there where uh, it didn't get covered. All right, we're gonna fill in the rest of the bottom with all that dark color that we picked up from our brush up here, right? You can even collect some of it and drag it down here. And it's gonna turn into this very blended, very soft, you know, almost mirror image from top to bottom, okay? I kind of left this white area here because I, you know, it's difficult to throw a big thick cloud in if you have, you know, too much paint on your canvas to start with. What's everyone got to say today? What's everyone doing on the 4th of July weekend holiday? Who's barbecuing later? What's on the grill? And what's your address so I can come eat? What are we going to eat today, hun? People are, are just, they have to be wondering, what is Josh going to eat today on 4th of July? Tortilla bake. There we go. That's what I'm going to make today. And it's always fantastic. Okay. All right, we, we, can, we can play with that. We can play with that. Let's wash this brush off real quick, because again, we're going to use it in a little bit. What's everyone got to say? What are your plans? I planned on sleeping in, but that didn't happen because I had to wake up and come be with you guys. So what are your plans for the day? <laughs> My plan did not work out. Daniel Holtis says, hi Josh. Hey Daniel. Let's see. Do, 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 do. All right, if we're gonna do this big whacking cloud, all right, I wanna have this white paint sort of on the edge. We can sort of decide what shape that we want it to be. Maybe it comes in here, comes around. I'm just using my palette knife. You guys can use a brush if you want to, you can just drop it on. But I find the palette knife sort of leaves different amounts in different areas, so it becomes easier to 
blend out, right? Daniel Hotha says, grilling New York strip corn on the cob veggies and cold beer fireworks tonight. Lee Callaghan says, watching from Scotland. So he's not celebrating. Yeah, so Lee's not <laughs> celebrating from Scotland, but that's fine. Mm -hmm. It's our Independence Day, Lee. And uh, us Americans love to celebrate with explosions. Daniel Holthus is in Western Michigan, so you can't go over and enjoy the food. Ah. Well, you know, I would be there if it was closer. Actually, I probably wouldn't. I don't like leaving my house. I'm like a homebody. I like being at home. All right. Let's throw this crazy looking cloud up here. And just sort of go over it with your two inch brush. When you guys know, do I have to keep, when, when is the point gonna come when I don't have to explain everything that we're doing? And we can just sit here and chit chat, right? You guys know how I make clouds. You know, and you know how much I love my shadows. Right, gotta have shadows in these suckers. That's a lot right there. Put some underneath or wherever. And come back in and just very lightly, right? I don't want these to blend away, but I don't want them to be super thick either, right? So just very lightly until they're very soft. Uh, plus the more paint you put on there, if you, you're pushing real hard, you can make them grow and then your cloud will disappear. And let's see. Just want a little bit of shadow in there. It's very soft, right? You can sit here and go like this back and forth against it. It's very soft. I don't want any hard lines or straight lines. Right? Daniel Wolfe says you should show us how to glaze. How to glaze a painting? Well, I have a couple videos for that, actually that I've done with uh, some of my other paintings right here on the YouTube channel. Well, it depends on where you're watching, but on my YouTube channel, I've done a, uh, done two or three. They've got a couple, almost a thousand views, I think, of uh, how I glaze, what I glaze them with. You know, I don't glaze every one. It's a very much, you know, on the fly sort of basis, whether or not I'll glaze one I love glazing, you know, black canvases because it brings out all the dark colors and and uh, it just gets this cool, deep, you know, look to it. And then some of them I won't if it's like, if it's a very matte, you know, very soft color like a pastel color sky like this, I might not glaze it. You know, it just depends on what I'm feeling like that day, really. I'm just adding a couple more little thicker, wider areas that are going to stand out, be a little bit more textured. Not super, not super textured, but I want them to have a little bit of, a little bit of something, a little bit of love. And when you throw a little bit of paint up there and you just very lightly go over it, it sort of mushes it in different places and so you get these cool little like 3D cloud looks that are kind of popping off the canvas. There we go. It's just a little bit too bright right in there. Uh, too dark actually, I'm sorry. There we go. We got one more. Every time I look back at the camera, all these little dark areas just seem too dark. So we got to fix that. We got to fix it before we move on. Just dropping on a little bit and sort of throwing the, the two inch brush over it just to flatten it down the littlest bit. And that'll leave a little bit of texture in your cloud. Staying phthalo green. Who else is phthalo green just runs like a marathon? As soon as I pull it out, no matter how much I knead the tube, just back and forth, no matter how much I do it, it just runs like a marathon. There we go. Take a clean brush, get rid of all these little swipes, right? It's very convenient to have a clean, uh, uh, sorry, two two-inch brushes, right? You can have a dirty one and a cleaner one to sort of blend out the stuff you don't want without having to wash your brush back and forth. Very convenient. All right, why well, don't we throw like a, like a far-off bit of red. Those 
back into the distance, gets bigger as it comes up, right? And we're using uh, crimson for this one. It's just a big messy shape. And we're going to take and blend that sucker out just a little bit. Right, we don't want to lose it against all this other red or have it blend in with the yellow. We're just very lightly touching it, right? And then we can go back in and we can highlight it, throw a bit of white over it. Just hide some of that red with the white and it'll become very like soft. Pull over to the side, just a couple swipes. It becomes very soft back there. Sort of hides all that deep dark red. And you get these cool little distance sort of clouds, clouds back there. Let's see. I can come in with like this big old ugly sucker over here. All right, I took our blue and black, sort of brought it down. Bring it down in different places, making this sort of cloud shape, but I'm leaving air, some areas lighter, some areas darker. You guys know me, I don't have to explain it anymore. This big old cloud out here. A lot of times it's easier if you put your shadows in first, then you can come back and do your highlights and and uh, you know, then go back and do more shadows. It's just, you just sit there and play with it all day long. On these bigger clouds, I want bigger, thicker chunks of paint, right? That way, when we go blend them out, I'm gonna get all these to mix in, and again, leave some of those dark shadows in there. Not too many, but don't cover them all. And as you get out towards your yellow over here, you gotta be very, very light. Otherwise, the uh, that blue will start going green in a hurry. Just mixing it in, all right, very softly, as soft as you can lift it, really, soft as you can be. Now that one looks so cool over here, this, this one just looks weak, it's a lame little thing. Gotta get, we gotta do better up there. We gotta do better over here, guys. Unless we got like this big storm coming in. We could rock it that way. All right, a couple more clouds. You guys know me, I can't just paint this bland little sky. It's gotta be full of clouds and details and all sorts of stuff. Just little bits. Doesn't even have to have a shadow, that one. Yeah. All right, now I got my idea. Okay, sometimes we just do, I do as many clouds until it takes me to get an idea, and then we rock and roll, right? Okay, what's everyone saying? And no one has any suggestions? I'm sorry, I was distracted. Josh, we should put a cabin in. Josh, we should do this. Da Daniel Wolfe says, I mix phthalo blue and phthalo green for my water. That's I've done that before too, it's a very pretty color. Very pretty, like sea green light. Especially if you got a, you know, down in your liquid white. Everybody blends. So it's funny, like this. Your your painting may never look like this because you might not have used the same amount of paint on your brush, or the blending might have been different, or you know, any reason, literally any reason, and it would look a little bit different. Yeah, a little bit more red versus a little bit more yellow. Yours is not going to look the same. So don't worry. It doesn't have to look the same. Just kind of showing you guys sort of how I learned and that's the, the little tricks and things that I've learned to make it go a little quicker and that way you guys don't have to learn it for yourself, you know what I mean? All right, we're gonna go crazy. We did our mountain mixture. Who knows what our mountain mixture is? If you guys have painted with me before, what three colors do I use to make a mountain almost every time? And then every, you know, we'll add different colors. But these are three base colors. Anybody? I'm gonna give you some time. Okay. I'm gonna give you some time. Let's see. Any 
anybody know? You guys can see we're just making a mess here. And you may be able to see, you know, at least one of the colors in this mix just from the thing there. It's blue, black, and crimson. Come on, guys. You should know me better. It's my favorite three colors. It's the colors I use most often, besides white. White is the one I use the most, but. Lee said it. There you go, crimson, black, and blue, Lee. Lee knows. Lee knows me. All right, we're gonna have to fix that little bit. These dang brush hairs, you know, come out a little bit too far sometimes and get into your sky. You really gotta be careful with this top, uh, your very top line of your mountain, right? Just bring this sucker straight out if we wanted to. Just cut off all that beautiful brightness. You get your dark, you get your light. Really neat. And you can see why we added all these random strokes uh, of paint with our knife. We just dropped them on there. And it's so you, this, you know, your mountain will blend a little bit differently. You'll get these darker areas and lighter areas all on its own. See one right here, it's a nice big dark area. And that'll help you sort of plan out. This is this is the canvas's way of telling you how to do it. Like, you know, do it this way. Put your snow here, put your highlights there, your shadows there, or whatever. So listen to it. It is there to guide you. The painting gods are there to guide you. Alright, so this big old sucker over here. I gotta deal with all this glare. You guys get to see it nice and clear. Get all this slick wet paint on there. There we go. I like it. We still got our little lighter area down here that we could reflect. With the blue, a little bit of red. We're losing some of it, but not all of it's going to be water. And the water doesn't have to perfectly reflect either. When you look at water in nature a lot, it's it's almost black depending on the angle that you're looking at, what's around it. You know, so it doesn't always have to be the same. Now we said we were going to go with a. Uh, a winter scene, right? So we gotta have a snowy mountain top, is my guess. But it's not just gonna be all snow, it's not gonna be the same plain mountain, right? We're gonna sort of play with it a little bit. Maybe we can throw some bit of brown and red up in here. You, know what, you guys know me, yellow ochre and mix that with brown. And that is a cool color, let me tell you. Come down like this. Grab a little bit more. Maybe we got this little ridge that comes over, right? This may look similar to you guys that watched my live inside the Bob Ross oil painting group. Similar style of a mountain, right? Just sort of dragging it down. But I don't want the whole thing, right? We're in we're in the winter, but not every winter does the snow get covered, you know, the entire mountain get covered sometimes so we are going to start to run out of room of places to mix this stuff right <laughs> there we go we're going to get some of the white some of the blue and remember just a little smidge of the black and that just dulls it down just a little bit that'll be the shadow of our of our snow right maybe we have shoot maybe there's a little bit over here got the shadow coming down Scrape that a little bit over there, a little bit over there. And just play with it until you think, you know, maybe there's a little ridge that comes off this way. And then we can add on to that with our highlights and everything will be gravy. Just sort of plan it out in your head beforehand. Throw those shadows in, then you can go back in and put your uh, put your highlights and stuff. It'll mix in, it'll cover all those shadows, and you'll leave some of them. You guys know. All right, we're gonna come down, a little bit more of that white and the blue, just so we can have this foggy area, right? We're gonna need more white paint. Okay, let me throw a little touch of the white off of this guy. Maybe there's some on the top there. Just wanna drag it down. I hate straight lines though, right? I'll make it a straight line. Get 
get some of that mountain covered in that snow. Drop a little bit off the side. Let it blend in with that blue. It'll change color and then you'll get your shadow, right? It's good right there. It's definitely hard to see. You guys are lucky. Because I can't see the dang thing. You know what it's about with happy little landscapes. We make a mess, guys. You gotta make a mess. It has to look, you know, can't look perfect, right? You don't want it to be perfect. Come down here, drop some of that white in. And then we're gonna have to fix the way that this canvas is sitting on this easel because it's already getting in my way. A right, little bit of black over here, add some shadows in. I love coming back in with that initial mountain color and dropping in like real deep, dark shadows. Kind of blend in, you don't want them all showing, you just want it to get that color just a little bit darker. And there's one up here. You know, they're all over the place, they're never... A mountain is not a very straight up thing, right? You gotta have these shadows everywhere. And the more you put in, the better it'll look sometimes. Until you do that one too many. And then you're you're in agony city, like Bob says, you gotta start over because you did too many shadows. And as I say that, I feel like I'm doing too many. So we're gonna stop. What's it look like? Spectacular. That's not bad. I'll fix a couple little areas right here where the snow is sitting on top, right? Then we'll have like a little bit fall over the side just so it's not even. Maybe there's a little down here. Never know. You just never want it to be, you know, the same. Okay, we're going to take our two inch brush and pull down, swipe up. As high as you feel comfortable in the way that you laid it down, right? And the higher up you go, the more sort of blurry and far off and distant your mountain becomes. What about that over there? And I hope you guys can see really well because I sure can. <laughs> I cannot. So I just see this very glary. Even the dark blue over here looks very bright because of all the glare. What am I even doing? There we go. Okay, we've come out the top of our mountain since we can't see. So, we're gonna have to go in and change that a little bit. No big deal. No <laughs> big deal. It looks magical. Yeah, looks good. You know what I need to do? My set I was gonna do is do this. I might need some help here, babe. What do you mean help? I don't do cameras. I need to get this, there we go. On the very edge of the easel right here. And this is sometimes you get those crazy accidents, right? Happy little accidents where your canvas falls out and goes face down onto the carpet. It's not a happy accident in my opinion. Huh? It's a good time. Yeah. Almost happened earlier. You know what we can do? We could even take, you could take the very top of this sucker and just lift it straight up, just the littlest bit, straight as you can get it, and you get the effect of like these far off trees. Again, they don't all have to touch, they don't have to do anything, just very gently, as light as you can, otherwise they will be gigantic trees, right? All right, why don't we do, just get paint all over ourselves. <laughs> and what if we come in with that? You can see, it just about popped out. It's hard to keep them as tight as I want them to be. A little bit of brown inside here, just in different places.
Because it never all gets covered. You're out. Yeah, I know. This thing's really irritating. You gotta beat it hard, you know what I mean? You know what I mean. You guys know what I mean. Alright, just a little bit of brown color in there, and that might help it, you know, us bounce off what we're trying to do. A little bit of brown in there, a little bit of white. All of our mountain didn't get covered, right? And we got some of that brown sort of showing through in different places where it didn't get covered as well. Okay. Nothing is ever fully covered. There we go. It's really neat, but there we go, there we go. So you gotta play with it until you like it, guys. <laughs> That's what I do. That's what I tell my wife. Play with it until you like it. <laughs> It's all, you know, it's almost like she doesn't like it. Almost. There we go. Let me get a little bit more of the... We had a couple little highlights over there. You never know. Again, you're just messing with it until you like the way that it looks. But I knew I wanted to have, like, some bit of you know, a little bit of dirt in our mountain today. So it never always gets covered in snow. Not bad at all, guys. Okay, we're gonna come back in. We're gonna do the same colors to make another mountain. You guys are like, what? Trust, we're gonna make another mountain right up into this cloud that we made, right? Helps push those clouds back if you throw a mountain in front of them. It really does. Strange that. Right? Oh, no, really? No shoot. That uh, pushes the clouds back when you put a mountain in front of it, huh? Oh, okay. Right? And don't make, you know, don't make your mountains pyramids. Right? You want them to have little rounded tops. I like them to have little, little rounded tops, right? Don't need to be all pointy and uh, sitch, right? You don't have to have them all like that. Let's do that one there. I love this little ridge back here. Make this nice dark bit of our mountains kind of stand out. It'll come down there. Now again, watch guys. If you put this dark color in different places, it will tell you just randomly, right? I didn't plan it. I'm not planning anything. <laughs> we don't plan. Right? We let it fly. Sometimes it comes out, I mean, for me anyway, better. I don't know about you guys, but uh, I can't draw, right? Which people find odd that I can't draw anything. If I can paint like this, I should be able to draw. Can't draw. And that is, what is going on over here? You ever just look at something that's just not right? You know, I want like a little edge to my cliff there. That's not bad. Still need to have like a shadow or something. It's just not in my mind. It's just not right. So that means we've got to play with it until we like it. That's not bad there. You could say it's like a. It's not a flat mountain top. But it's not bad. Don't want to kill any more of those uh, those neat little bits of brown, right? Yeah, keep that brown in there. That looks neat. That's why I like using the small knife too. What do you guys prefer? You prefer using the large Bob Ross knife, or the small knife, or the plastic knife that comes in the little, you know, multi brush kits? Like, what do you guys, because that's what I learned on, you know what I mean? I'm not ashamed to say that. I could not get the Bob Ross uh, palette knives to work for me at all. Like, it just, it just didn't work. I'm sorry. It just wasn't going to happen. They didn't break. They didn't do anything initially, you know what I mean? So, I used that small plastic knife, and... Uh, and it worked out great. And then I sort of, you know, forced myself to learn how to use the Bob Ross knife. 
And once I did, I never went back, I guess. What are we looking like? That looks cool. It's almost like this thing connects over here. We got a bit of this brown, get a little farther off, sort of further distance mountain. It's gonna look cool, guys. I do need to get more white paint, though. There it is. I need to get more every color paint, but the white, you know, at least on the palette. Okay. Now all of our lights going this way, so you can imagine all of our shadows would be on this side, so that means we need to make up some more shadows. So let's make them up. A little bit of white, a little bit of blue, a touch of black to dull them, right? And maybe on the back side of that peak you get a little bit, and on the back side of this peak maybe over here. All depends on what you want yours to look like, right? What do you want yours to look like? And be careful, because you can make something and it'll look really neat, and then you go over it one too many times like I just did and ruined what it looked like, right? All right, we're gonna have white over here. Let's have some dark, like shadowy bits over here. Our mountain comes down, it comes over here. We'll have this bit of white come down. You know, sort of make it up. But you wanna put your shadows in different places. And that way, you know, you can create this look. But look at that, that looks great in the camera. I was, just, I was just about to yell for you. I'm like, babe, where are you, babe? <coughs> Lee says, just finished a painting with mostly a knife. You get superb effects. Oh, I know. It's awesome. I did, a, a, you know, that whole space painting almost all by knife, except for the, the um, trees and stuff. Man, that looks cool. See? And that's just, the, it's, a, it's a negative image. Right? We're looking at all the shadows. All those dark areas are about to be white. Right, why don't we take like, this is when you gotta be brave. Take like the smallest bit of a certain color, red or crimson or something, and mix that sucker in until it's just like off white, right? Just so you don't have this white color. And then I'm just sort of like bouncing my knife on the way down letting the paint sort of pick up where it wants to pick up, break where it wants to break, right? Or you can do it in one fluid motion when you get down, you know, far enough where you want to, really. And that color of that snow looks really nice, babe. What do you think? I think it looks lovely. Drag out along the bottom because we're going to end up making some fog or something out of it anyway, right? Not going to go to waste. Let me get this sucker right here. Pull him down. Again, not covering all of those dark areas that our mountain left, right? You want to leave some of that stuff in there. And I know I say it all the time, and maybe I should just stop saying it. I'll just stop talking. Babe, you talk and uh, tell everybody what's going on. So here we see the Joshua <laughs> Kirkham in his natural habitat with a palette knife and an off-white color, creating the snow against the dark seams which were shadows that are now not their snow. I really like it. <laughs> it's like David Attenborough. <laughs> in the Seriously. back you can see tiny minute trees. Yeah, off into the distance. <laughs> and we'll drive over there with our tiny little motor in our car. Stop and get some petrol. <laughs> okay, let's see. I don't really think Before it's we offend the entire yeah, UK like, nation. I, I don't really think it's it's fair to make fun of British people no, on I'm July not 4th. Make, I'm not, yeah, on <laughs> July 4th. This is the day that we can make fun of them. Because we won. All right, guys. <laughs> In the back, you see a small war between two countries. Yeah. One wins and gets <laughs> a holiday, and the other one does not. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Just back here, you can 
<laughs> See, there's a nuke about to go off. <laughs> Alright, so we swiped up on our mountain, right? Made it real soft looking. Very soft at the bottom, crisp at the top, and then we're gonna, you know, do this. Maybe your canvas will, yep, it did. Maybe it'll fall out of the easel like mine does. It's only because I gotta try to keep you guys entertained, you know what I mean? So I need to, I can't just move everything every so often and redo and fix it. Nobody wants to see that. Nobody wants to see me do that. Okay. Be gentle. There we go. All right. And that looks good. What's that look like for you guys? <laughs> Lee says don't include the Scottish in that. Yeah. Let's see. Like this. Try to leave some of that color down there. Don't want to blend it all away, right? All right. Now we got some fog. Some issues we got to deal with. <coughs> we said all of our light was coming on that side, right? So it doesn't make any sense, Josh. Well, no one tells me these things. This should be blue shadowy. And we should have some white over here. And now I've got to go back over that again. The joy of painting, having to do things over and over and over again. There we go. Alright, I got my little fog. Need a little bit more fog. I almost want to put like a, I could do like another mountain in front. I could do a whole lot of stuff from here. A whole lot. What does everyone think? I'll do one more little chunk of like a mountain back in here that's just popped out in front. You know what I mean? Like a big, big old rock or something. All right, take this guy. Chris Cox says, "How was vacation?" It was good, actually. Just fine. I lost my golf tournament, but that's okay. <clears throat> I took 10th out of 18. I actually was fourth place, but when you do the whole handicapping deal, it was a, it was a chop job is what it was. But in, in either case, I had fun. Got to walk around the resort and stuff. That was cool. I'll throw some of this shadowy blue on this one side of this rock over here. So yeah, the resort was neat. And the uh, did a lot of walking. You know, played golf. It was awesome. So had a great time. Thank you for asking. Now we're just sort of dropping some white over this blue, leaving some of this dark. Right? You don't want to cover up all these dark areas. Maybe it comes down. It doesn't. It doesn't have to do much. All you need it to do is just sort of be there. Just be there. We're gonna throw a tree in front of it anyway. All right. Did we say we were gonna do a cabin in this one? Did anyone suggest a cabin? Not yet. Okay. Good. I hope they don't. <laughs> I'm running out of space for a cabin. All right. Let's do. Actually, no. I'm gonna. Okay. I got it. I got it. I got it, guys. I got it. I got it. I got it. There's a bit of like really bright blue right there. there we go. I got it. I got it. I got it. All right. We're gonna grab our size 10 fan brush, right? First, we're gonna grab our palette knife. We're gonna make up like a load more paint, okay? Green, black, crimson, blue, phthalo green, all these dark colors, right? Because I need a lot of paint. I'm gonna make some big trees. I need a lot of the shadowy color, right? When you mix that phthalo green in there, it's gonna give it like the you know, depending on where it's high lit or how it mixes with it, it's going to have this green tint to it. Okay. Got that. We'll take our size 10 fan brush. Just load it full of paint on both sides. Flip it, flip it. Wiggle it, right? 
then let's say there's like a shoot, there's like a tree right there. Bam! You guys think? Oh no, Josh! What happened? Why'd you do that? Yeah, I'm right, gonna leave. Try to leave a bit of that peak in there. Maybe we we'll cover it. Maybe we don't. All right, we're gonna go with the corner of the brush. Pushing upwards, depositing all this thick paint, right? I want like globs of goopy thick paint, okay? Just like that. Take our knife even, grab a little bit of that, and just sort of make a nice little straight up bit to the top of our tree. And we're gonna come over here just very lightly. In the beginning, just using the corner, right? And then as we come down, we get bigger and bigger and bigger until we're using all the bristles on the on the brush, right? Let's go over here. Let me make like a little little sucker that's back in here, which is the reason why we made all that fog. Right? We made all this fog back here to sort of let that tree push all that stuff back, right? Stick it in front there. All right, why don't we do, put the big tree on this side today. We'll go over here. Doesn't have to be a straight line, right? like that, using all my branches. And that looks cool. We're going to have our cabin right here in this open area. We're going to have a bunch of bushes and stuff. You want to make sure that your trees are super thick, right? you got to have these thick chunks of you know paint where the brush is like sticking to the, the canvas for our highlights to stick onto, right? Do it on the side for the buyer, of course. You want to see what it looks like? You got to buy it, right? How many times does Josh say that? A lot, I guess. Chris Cox says no cabin. No cat. No cabin. Everyone always asks for cabins, and now you don't want a cabin. That is ridiculous. Okay. Just very lightly, sort of giving myself like a a bit of land. Just so I know where, you know, my little horizons are, where my water is going to be, stuff like that. And that way, for my own brain, I can tell I'm going to have some shoreline over here. Dude, we could put like a fence. We don't even have to add water. We could do like a fence. You could do a road right here, right? And add like that little, that uh, K-rail barrier across the whole painting. And it would look like we were driving down the side of the car and just took a picture out the window. Oh, that's neat. It's neat, guys. It's neat. All right, we're going to take a 20-minute break. Everybody just put your phones down, okay? We're going to come back after this long commercial break, right? Okay, let's take a scoop up all the rest of that paint that we have made, right? Do you Probably feel depressed with yeah. anxiety? Is the world too much? Right. Try this new medication. Side effects include dying. <laughs> Anal leak? Yeah. Side effects include crapping your pants and dying. Oh, yeah, no, I'll take that. I need to get, you know, thicker hair. My hair's falling out. It needs to be thicker. All right, let's see. Infomercials by Josh in London. Everyone say hi to London. Have they been talking to you? Not really. Oh. I know, it's kind of sad. You guys know you're not chatty today? No chatty Cathy's? They are not chatty Cathy's today. Man. You guys are upsetting me. Not being chatty Cathy's. Okay, we're going to come in. Let's do, we're going to do a bit of a bush over here, right? I want it real big and, and texture, real thick, right? Do that. Just to finish that little side, we're going to use that half inch round again anyway. And why don't we do this? Scrape out the what our cabin's gonna look like here. 
I want it to be sort of, sort of bigger, bigger than normal, right? Take our roof, go back off that way, take the other end of it. It's almost like this tree would be in front of it. Scrape off the sides back there. I'm going to show you guys where my cabin is going to live. You can see, sort of see the shape, right? Okay, we're going to come in like this. A little bit of that dark color. Just sort of smooshing it in right now, right? And then we can take and we'll finish our tree back over the edge of that. Got to have white snow for our roof, right? Just like so. Doesn't have to be perfect. You don't want it to be like super white. At least I don't. The roof right there on the other side. Is a funky looking cabin. We need our roof to come down a bit more. Make this thing look correct. Now in that case, now it almost looks like we could leave that tree back there. Let's try leaving it back there. We'll leave it back there so our guy has a clear view to the, the water that he's got to go get to, right? Okay, I'm not going to overmix my wood here. You know how I hate when my wood's overmixed, babe. Yeah. <laughs> like, ooh, watch the, watch the wood. Look at that. That looks really good, actually. That color came out exactly how I wanted it to. You don't want to over mix it again. Get those cool wood grain colors in there. Just pull them down. Make the side over here. So you can tell there's a difference, right? What'd you say? Oh. What you doing in here, Bailey? My daughter loves to come in and check out what dad's doing on the weekends. There we go. I like that. I think I want that snow on the roof just a little bit brighter. Nice cabin. Thanks, babe. You know, the fans always ask daddy for a cabin, so I I give them what they just, want. There we go. I love how you just do the biggest trees ever. Biggest what? The biggest trees ever on the side. Yeah. Awesome, right? Okay, we're going to scrape out a little area for our door here. Drop in that dark colored paint. Fix our door frame here. where you decide how tall your cabin is and everything. Take ours and just sort of decide where he lives. Pull out this way. There we go. Just a little bit of land to work with, right? A little bit of land or shadow or something. underneath these guys. I'm trying to leave a bit of this water kind of right down at the bottom of his little land area. All right, he's got like this little path that comes down. Maybe there's a bit of a bit of dirt around there and then we can fill it in with the snow, right? We're just kind of dropping in shadows, giving ourselves an idea of what we want to do. Yeah. Uh, the wood 
room's getting a little bit too dark over there. It's starting to irritate me. Come in, nice little door. Bam. Just like that. Make our uh, roof hang over a little bit more. Sort of change the angle, all right? Sometimes you just gotta play until it looks right. That's what I like doing. There we go. Put a little bit of dark in this paint over here so we can mix it in. Make that side a little bit darker over there. I like putting a little bit of shadow underneath my the eve of the house too. This gives it a little something. A little something extra. Right. Let's go like this. We're gonna scrape out that area just a little bit. Take our CAD yellow. Fill that sucker right in. Do it over here too. Scrape out just a little window. Maybe this is like the kitchen over here. And uh, somebody's home and cooking. Yeah. And not bad at all. You can even do another one. There we go. A little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of uh, cat yellow. Drop it in, then we can come back and fix the shape. If the shape got mixed up, got messed up, we can fix it. There we go. Oh, it's Get that liquid white and just really sort of outline the edges of our door. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now it's gone way off the hinges here. Take it, scrape that away, and then just leave the littlest bit of that liquid white on there. That's pretty good. I didn't want to pick up right here. Bit of our brown, sort of close off that window. Should we even do like a Design on the inside. All right, a couple crisscross lines. You got a, you got a window. It doesn't look too bad, actually. Okay, why don't we take, wash off some of these brushes because I'm gonna have to get to work on this white. season a little bit of snow back in here it's all muddy around the guy's uh, front door every time he comes out so I'll add a little bit darker color over here comes out and steps in the mud some snow over here on these guys and then we'll take and uh, I don't know whether to blend it out or to leave it. So we're gonna figure it out. That's why we wash this brush off, right? We're just very lightly sort of drag it so that white doesn't blend away all the way, right? You don't wanna, wanna have it blend all the way away. It's almost like we can't tell where the shoreline is. A little bit of fogginess. Right. Foginess. 
remember your angles of your land are very important to how it looks. So be careful. what our water looks like. some of that darker color down. Is no one saying anything? No one's talking? Is anyone even watching? Yes, people are watching. If you guys don't watch, I'm not doing this. Carolyn Douglas okay. says, nice. Nice. All right, we're going to get a bit of our tree trunk here, then we're going to highlight these trees. Tree trunk doesn't have to go from the top to the bottom, right? You won't see all of it. So just put it in different places. Let some of it shine through. And you got a tree. That we need to highlight. We need to clear some space first. That's what we need to do. Alright, let's see here. Figure out. What the heck we're doing? All right. Sorry if I'm all over the place, guys. I'm trying to I'm trying to think. You guys think that we, you know, already know what we're about to paint today before we start, and that is just not true, right, babe? Nope. I even said today, this morning. The, uh, I was like, I have no idea what I'm going to paint for today's painting. There's no clue. And, you know, some days that's not good to uh, go into it with no idea. But some days it's not bad. And I don't know that we should add water, babe. I think it looks good with, uh, with this snowy look to it. Chris Cox says, everyone's drinking beer and burning hot dogs for the fourth. No time for talking. Yeah. I feel you. Let me figure this out. I figure it out in my head before we go anywhere. What do we do? I can put a whole other bush in front. That's probably what I'm going to do. Another bush up there. Let's start highlighting some stuff. We're getting off base here. Alright, we're going to take that same shadowy color with the blue and the white and the liquid white and we'll put a little bit of dark in there and why not we can come back and I have these micro fan brushes you guys can order you can get them on uh, amazon.com slash shop slash happy landscape art and uh, they're very good for small details I, I like doing these on my you know I'll make the make the tree with a certain size fan brush and then we'll change it up and go with a smaller fan brush and you can just get these cooler details. And you guys know, you've seen my paintings, right? So you know how I do it. You just gotta order your stuff and uh, try it out for yourself, right? There you go. That looks nice. 
I keep going back in and grabbing a little bit more liquid white and sort of wiping off my my uh, brush each time and that way you don't pick up all this thick shadow colored paint that we have right some of this over here just kind of show you guys what I'm doing over here just come in and very lightly, right? I'm not trying to smush anything, just very lightly going over what we already created, right? Don't have to go all the way to the bottom. You actually want it to be a little bit darker at the bottom than it is at, than it is at the top, right? And then like that. Look at this tree just bounce off of the fog that we put in the back there. It's beautiful. Look at that beautiful thing right there. Get some of this uh, excess paint off this brush. See if we can't add just a little, a couple little touches of white in here. Right? Don't want to add too much. You don't want to cover all of your shadows. Right? Just a little bit little bit and yeah, then we can take we can do a whole other big big set of bush in here all these gigantic very thick very close up very textured bits of leaves and everything else Wash that off again. Go back here. This one a little bit brighter, but again, not covering everything. You don't want to cover all those shadows down there. And I'll leave the bottom dark. I just want to fog it up just a little as bit down here around the edges. Just so I can get paint on my on my palette, right? Alright, we gotta decide what's going on over here. We really do. Time is up, Josh. It is time to decide. Here we go. Come back in. Chris Colt says, agreed, no water on this one. Yeah, just a little snowy little walkway, right? A little path. Just going in here, scraping in some sticks and twigs. You know what, guys? Oh, guys. <laughs> oh, guys. Got an idea. I have an idea. This could be like the dude's driveway, right? Get this soft little brownish look. I like that back there. It's like too too textured, I guess. Okay, right, I want to put a fence in, guys. I'm going to do like a fence down the road, right? Or we could do a couple pieces off of this side, like the road like turns around. We could do a couple pieces this way. No one's going to tell me about the tree that I forgot to Highlight, that's fine. No one wants to tell me about the stuff we forget about. We go. Look at all these cool little details you get with this little micro fan brush. You stay on the edges, you skip a little bit, and you get these really neat uh, details. I mean, you can't, you know, stuff that would take you much longer to do had you have had you know, a bigger brush, you'd be touching, you know, it's just different. They're much, they're really cool. I, 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 uh, oh man, I had to burp, sorry. I recommend them. There we go. This big old tree behind his house. This little driveway, we'll put a fence in there. And it'll be good. What's going on over there, babe? You're not very talkative. I see I'm what sorry. you're doing. 
I see what you're doing, but you're not very talkative. For the folks at home. Here we see a wooden cabin <laughs> in the midst of some beautiful Christmas trees. Add some shadows. Over the far off snowy mountain is the strawberry moon casting a nice <laughs> shadow over the snows. London Attenborough. <laughs> just trying to leave like some bits of just unevenness, right? Like a mess. That's all we really do around around Josh's place is leave a big mess everywhere. snow, a little bit of mud, a little bit of different things, and I'm just holding my knife, you can see, just sort of holding it on this angle, almost like I was going to pull down the other way, but we're just going horizontal with it. Just leaving these long, straight sort of striations, right? This is a little bit of texture, so it's not straight, you know, not uh, so bland. Gives you one more little detail to look at in there, right? All right, let's see. Do like a big old rock over here against the side of the dude's yard, right? Everybody's got that one rock that he just can't get rid of. Just a little bit of. Two nuts. Snow around the bottom of the guy. And there we go. You guys know me, I just want it to be. Chris Cox says, I wasn't here for the first part. Cad yellow, bright red, Perusian blue for the sky. Uh, we did Cad yellow, uh, yellow ochre, bright red. A lizard in crimson, blue, and black for this guy. And those were the colors. It's like this wicked glare on the canvas, but it looks like it's a search helicopter. Oh, yeah? Yeah, look. Look on the camera. Looks like there's a search oh, helicopter I see. coming in. Oh, it's because the... Uh, no, the other side. Oh, it's because it's wavy. Yeah. The canvas is like... <laughs> A that looks like a search helicopter's coming in, or a UFO light. Yeah, right. Okay, let's take up the rest of our black, crimson, and blue. Right? We're gonna make up our shadowy color again, the same shadow color that Josh likes to use all the time. There's so many different colors you can get out of mixing these three colors and then blending it with your liquid white. It's just a never-ending difference in color. And you guys know, that's the first time I said that today, actually. Differences in color, guys. Right? Gotta yell it from the mountaintops at you guys. All right, should we do the fence down this side or down the long side is the question. And that is the question. Babe, I'm asking. You're not responding. I, uh, my YouTube viewership was set on the wrong chat notification, and so I just changed it. And there are a bunch of comments on YouTube. Oh, YouTube! That, I, that right I didn't on. see. Dave Smith says, "Wow." Trini Styles says, "Very nice." Dave Smith says, "Where do you come up with these layouts and ideas <laughs> of what to paint? That's incredible." Just from my head, Dave. If you're still here. Christine Miller says, beautiful, I love your mountains, love the colors you chose, and I use a little palette knife. Yeah, I use a small one as Monica well. Monica Stewart says, beautiful. John Q. Gloss says, watching, just enjoying the process. Christine Miller says, it looks like an Alaskan cabin in mountains. I don't fish, but I would sit out there in a big wooden chair and read on my Kindle, very relaxing. Nice. Christine Miller also says, happy 4th of July to you and your wife and your daughter. Well, thank you. Oh, that's too much. I'm not too high on this guy. To come back in and go over him with my tree again. There we go. Alright, I'm figuring fence on this longer side, right? 
further away. So we're making our little fence posts, just getting slightly taller as we get closer to us, right? And slightly wider, I guess. For some reason, I like doing fences with an upside down palette knife versus uh, doing it the other way. It's almost too much of a incline, I think. For once, I think I overdid it on the fence. Yeah, definitely. Okay, right, so we'll make these ones a little bit taller. Right, they don't need to. Uh, don't need to all be the same, but I don't want them to all be so different. You know, you could fix it by making them trees, and then put in a small fence in front of them. I could. <laughs> I like the. Uh, you could do multiple too. I mean, you do whatever. Do whatever. You come across this. There's so much behind it, I don't even need any extra paint. I'm just sort of flattening the paint that's there already. Yeah, I love doing fences. Don't ask why. Just like them. Yeah. He's a lot of paint to do a fence, though, for sure. Oh, I'm gonna have to cover over my rock. Watch this. You wanna save a piece of your painting that you really like? Just have like one fallen bit of your fence. And you can save that little piece of rock back there, right? Otherwise we would have to cover over the sucker. Chris Cox says, still use the magic fly a lot or stick to the Bob Ross paints? Uh, today we did Ross paints. Uh, I had the magic fly paints out and available on my other palette. Um, but I didn't, in this winter scene, you know, I didn't want a lot of very bright colored bushes. So I, you know, but on uh, this last Friday, we painted in the Bob Ross oil painting for beginners group, and um, I used all the Magic Fly color. We had like 19 colors in that painting. Yeah, it looks neat. I like that. Continue off the edge, like the fence just keeps going and going and going. Wrap around the side. Upside down almost. There we go. Whoop! About dropped the pallet knife. Okay. Now we're going to come in, we're going to throw a little bit of brown, mix that with a little bit of white. All right, get our wood grain color again. And let's do it upside down again. We'll go on this side. And this is where you can sort of, you know, create your fence look how you want it to. Know, what's kind of where you want your shadows, where you want your highlights to be, what you know, what's going to be covered in snow, what isn't. You just sort of figure it out. I'm, I'm basically pulling about halfway over, starting on the edge, left edge, pulling about halfway across my fence post so I have a little bit of light, a little bit of dark on there, right? Need to make up some more brown and white. white even. Goodness. Okay. A little bit out, we'll come back here. Just put a little bit of, little bit of wood color on there and then we can come back in with our, our uh, snow and highlight just the top. So I don't have, you know, tons of wood color on here. Remember, whatever doesn't get covered, you know, if your if your wood doesn't cover over it, we can always cover that with snow and uh, do it that way. Yep, that rock back there is very tricky to the eye. 
Is it a piece of the fence? Is it not? Why don't we do, just since we're here, just go off like it goes behind the, uh, goes behind our cabin back there. You gotta be careful when you're on top of really thick stuff. There, a little bit of a wood color. Bam. Now it's like it goes off back behind the cabin. We got our little driveway. Everything's looking gravy. I really like it, guys. It really looks good. Just adding a little bit more snow to the top of my roof. Different places. Almost looks like there needs to be like a Just separate that from the mountain top behind it. Sweet. What do you guys think? You need anything else? Just birds. Just birds. <laughs> Just birds, she says. I think it might need like a couple little sticks or some kind of some kind of something coming out fill that in bingo bango just getting a little bit of liquid clear uh, sorry the paint thinner and our um, our little wood color our little wood mixture and we're just kind of popping in some color into those little sticks and twigs that we have Sort of hidden around the the painting, different places, right? It's not all the same all the time. So I add different little things in different spots, different little bits of color, different little branches that come out. Different little things. There we go. They don't all have to be the, the same or anything. So don't worry about that. Put a couple little bits of grass in around the edges of these poles. Just with the, the little micro liner brush. Always get that little bit of grass that grows around there. Christine Miller says, are you going to put snow by the fence or under the fence? I'm going to do something. <laughs> We're unsure of what it is yet. And since my wife thinks that I'm going to forget our family, I'm going to go ahead. It's not what I said, just to be clear. What did you say, babe? Enlighten us. <laughs> you said, does it need anything else? I said, three little birds. Well. I mean, really, if you thought on the positive side, you would realize that I meant that. That was There's your three words. All that humanly needed to be perfect. Ah. Not that it was a negative. All right. So they think it needs snow down around by the by the fence posts. Huh? Make it a little messy. Gotta have it be messy, right? There we go. Can't have them like they're just coming up out of nothing. What do you guys think now? We should probably put a little bit of snow on top of the fence, but it's like it's landed there. Yeah, for sure. Yep. And here we see snow that has blown past the grounded areas of the fence posts. It's just whipping its way across <laughs> the frozen winter landscape. Okay, we're going to mix our titanium white with liquid white. Right, so you get this goopy white mess. And we're going to come in and just on the tip tops of our fence, right, we're going to put a little bit of snow. Just by touching. If you have your liquid white with your titanium white, it should deposit relatively easily. Then you can come back in. And again, we're just kind of touching and moving. Whatever sticks is going to stick. 
whatever doesn't isn't, right? Isn't that how it goes? Yep. It is what it isn't. No, it is what it is. Oh, it, it is what it is. is. <coughs> it is what it is. There we go. A little bit of schnoll on the top of your finch, okay? Now you guys are like, but Josh, you didn't put any on the top of the fence posts, and you're right, because I need my micro um, palette knife, right? Micro palette knife. Have you ever heard, heard of anything so ridiculous? <laughs> a micro palette knife. We're just going to little touch right on the tops of those things. Don't ask me where I got this. It was a gift. So I don't know where I got it from. Jenny and Tori might know where they got it from. I don't know where I got it from. Christine Miller says, it's amazing, with a smiley face with stars for eyes. Oh, nice, stars for eyes, smiley face. That's what we need. I need a little bit more. Hello. That's why we have the moving blankets down, right, babe? Yes. In case we, uh... Makes a happy little mess. And you're a happy mess. All right, right now I'm just gonna take a little bit of that snow, maybe like it got wind blown, it's wind swept. A little bit of snowy, little chunky, little thick bits of uh, texture right here. We're gonna end this painting with these big old chunks of snow. Just like that, sort of smushing over them, making it nice and messy and uneven, right? He's got this trail and comes up, comes home, goes to bed. That's our mountain man right there. Fix that one little area. Everything else looks good. Throw a little dark line underneath our rooftop right there. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys liked it. I liked it. It turned out pretty good. I mean, we could add like a giant, you know, up close stick in front, but I think it looks fine. I think I like the, uh, I like the way the fence turned out. Everything looks great. This guy's got a wicked view. I would love to, uh, would love to have his view. That's for sure. So let's sign this thing down here in the dark area. Cause you guys know me. I like using a bright color to sign with. Go. Bam. Call that one done, bed. It's the London and Josh show. Do, 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 do. We need a theme song, huh? Okay. I'm sure we could get one. Yeah, we need a theme song. John Q. Glass says, looks amazing. Thank you, John Q. Yep. Sort of going over, trying to get any little bit of liquid white that I have left that wants to stick in certain places. Besides that, it looks great. Well, guys, we had another live. You watched another video, and it turned out fantastic. I hope you guys do this painting and uh, send it in. Don't have to have the same colors in the sky or on the mountains or whatever, but, you know, sort of make it look similar. So when I look at it, I can go, oh, that's my painting that I did. You know what I mean? <laughs> I did, I was watching, uh, I was scrolling through Facebook and I saw somebody put up a picture and it's like, oh, I haven't painted in a few months and here's what came out. I was like, man, that looks like my painting, like a lot. And he goes, yeah, I followed your tutorial. I was like, there you go. If you do that though, put my link out. Whatever video you want, share it, right? I can't reach everybody. So I need your guys' help in order to reach the entire world, the audience, and uh, bring them so they can hang out and paint with us, right? So share the links when you do your video or when you do your paintings and, you know, or put my Happy Little Landscapes uh, tag out there. Tag It's uh, on Facebook. It's at Happy Landscape Art. Um, and that will bring you to my Happy Little Landscapes page. So when you post yours, post that and I'll be able to see it. So love to see what you guys can come up with, uh, even with a blue sky or green trees or, you know, grass. It's, uh, even in a summer scene, this is a really cool sort of uh, layout so hope you guys like it and uh, you know it's at my website yeah go to my website happylandscapes.com thanks babe uh, you can shop my Etsy store my Amazon storefront link if you 
need to buy your supplies or you need more paints or you need an easel, I have this easel plus 15 other easels you can choose from. Uh, I have all the canvases, I have all the Bob Ross paints, the liquid white, clear, black, everything. Um, anything you want, you can get through my Amazon storefront link and it'll be a little bit cheaper uh, than it would be. It ends up saving people a few bucks. So at least that's what George said. Saved him uh, like 40 something dollars that he ordered through my link. So makes me happy. Besides that, you guys, uh, I'm going to do the intro for the YouTube video right now so we can show you guys, you know, that deal. We got a brand new space painting coming out on Wednesday. Um, it's right over here. I'm looking at it. It's beautiful. The mountains are sort of similar to this layout, which is why I went with it, uh, just because I liked it so much. So um, besides that, you guys take care. There's always something that Josh sees afterwards that we need to fix, right? Are we going to let the YouTube people see the secret this week, or are we going to let the them secret? Fix yeah, the filming of the intros. Oh, uh, uh, you have more on YouTube currently than you have on Facebook. Well, everybody on Facebook, go over to YouTube, and we'll kill the Facebook camera. And uh, you know, thanks for watching. Thanks for having with us. We're going to show the YouTube people some some behind the scenes secret stuff, right? So, bye, Facebook. Have a good day. Hope you paint this, send it in. And besides that, go over to YouTube, click that link, and it'll send you right over here. We'll keep painting, right? If you just want to stick with us, then we will keep painting. But yeah, this one turned out great. We'll do the intro right now. So when we do the YouTube video in like another week or two, um, you know, you guys will be able to, I'll, I'll have something, right? I'll show you, I'll show you the secrets, the secret behind the scenes stuff. Hey guys, Josh, Happy Little Landscapes, back again today on a 16 by 20 inch canvas. Beautiful mountain scene. We've got this big cabin, gigantic trees, lots of bushes, snow, a fence, just shadows. Ow, right? Get that explosion that uh, you YouTube livers don't get to see. It's in my other videos. I'm sure you've seen it if you've been watching. But, uh, oh, thanks, Palmer. Red Bull, secret sponsor, please. Yes, someone sponsor me. I have this Red Bull gave me wings to paint this painting. Look, right there. It's Red Bull. Wings. <laughs> mm. Okay. Woo! My goodness. I'm glad no one can see my shirt. It has my own face on it. And now it has paint on it. So, it's good. Alright. Ow! Look at that explosion. Oh, you dick! Oh, I just spilled my whole paint thinner cup. All over my foot, all over my blanket. All on film. How did you? I went to do something and I knocked the thing over. Did everyone see that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's on my yardstick. Look at this. Oh, it's everywhere. Well, now I guess it's time for you to do a painting on your foot. Yeah. Here, take the camera down here so these people that are still alive can see. Very short human eyes everywhere. All over. I think we should have just quit. But it's up. Okay. Well, guys, uh, thanks for hanging out with me, watching me spill. I have a paint thinner covered foot. Uh, I probably should go shower off. <laughs>